Netflix's new sitcom, That 90s Show, based on its predecessor, That 70s Show, falls short in the hopes to successfully adapt to the new era of television, the Netflix era. It is easy to say that this show is simply carried by the nostalgia of what has come before, but that is not my issue with this new adaptation. Instead, it is a growing part of the real problem. The problem that begins with the way Netflix distributes a majority of its content. Straight to video on demand. A whole season available in an instant. And it simply isn't Netflix's fault. Viewers today don't want to have to wait a week to watch the next episode in their favourite TV show. And so, video streaming companies find it in their best interest to deliver instant seasons. Fine, I'll take care of it. But what does this mean for sitcoms? Sitcoms are not meant to be binged. Episodes are meant to be standalone. Give you time to digest the show and build on your presumptions about where it's all heading. This is very difficult to do if episodes are watched in one sitting. In That 90s Show, it's difficult to assume time has passed between episodes as you are experiencing a whole season in a day or two. When I hear Leah say, Summer's almost over. It just doesn't seem like summer should be over. These 10 episodes don't feel like two and a half months worth of experiences. Just simply, a highlight reel of a couple of weeks. On top of this, I don't feel like we're gotten great depth of who these characters are beyond the surface level. Sure, they've got one or two traits each that helps them stand out individually, but beyond that, the characters just seem hollow. What does Ozzy bring to this friendship group other than his sassy personality? Is Jay anything more than the ditzy ladies man? Who really is Nikki other than Nate's girlfriend? These characters seem to lack depth and it's something I wish this show focused more on. I understand that it's difficult to do with such short episodes in a season, but without this crucial character building, we just won't care what happens to the new cast in that 90s show. You know, the same new cast that this show is supposed to centre around. I guess my main issue with all the cameos, the callbacks, and the nostalgia has everything to do with it being in replacement of character building the new cast. For every storyline focused on Red, Kitty, and Fez, is time away from exploring these new characters, giving them more personality, and getting to discover who they really are beyond the obvious. This wasn't a problem for That 70s Show, because we got 25 episodes in the first season alone. 25 episodes where it truly felt like these characters had personality, were driven by motives, and were growing as individuals. Sure, you had the comedic episodes here and there, but overall, characters were still progressing. This is simply not the case in this new adaptation. Another questionable aspect of this show is, I just couldn't imagine this cast being friends with one another. Seriously, what would Ozzy and Jay even talk about? Why does Gwen hang out with her brother, her brother's girlfriend, and her brother's best friend, when she clearly doesn't like any of them? Did Nikki have any other friends before dating Nate? If not, who within this group was she even close with? This collection of characters is a bit all over the place. I don't mind the representation of diversity in this show. Got to meet that quota. But for the sake of stability, have it at least be reasonable to understand why someone like Gwen hangs around someone like Jay, especially before Leah shows up. The only friendship I buy into is the Jay and Nate dynamic, and they are essentially the same person, so it isn't difficult to see why. Otherwise, expand on these relationships more. Show me why Nate and Ozzy are friends within the same group. Sure, it doesn't have to be much, but enough to prove they don't just tolerate one another. Before watching the last two episodes, I would have added Nate and Leah to the list of characters who don't really interact with one another. But they finally did. All for a bit of a cliffhanger ending to the season. What the hell? You see, this is the problem. 
You shouldn't have to build a relationship between these two main characters this late into the season. I'm not even asking for hints throughout. All I want is for these characters to actually seem like friends. For Leah and Nate to have a couple meaningless chats throughout the season. To give us a sense that they know each other a little better than what has been depicted. For all the lack of character development from this first season, you would assume that we would tackle a few bigger topics to balance it all out. But nope, this doesn't happen either. The closest we get to an actual meaningful subject was when Ozzy finally came out to Kitty. But did this lead to anything noteworthy? I even have a boyfriend, Etienne, who lives in Canada. Well, I don't know how I feel about this. Oh. My friend Sharon married a Canadian man and he- Not really. I sort of wanted a difficult response from Kitty. This is a show based in the 90s, and Kitty is in her 60s. She doesn't have to be accepting of Ozzy, and I think this would have been a wonderful opportunity to add a bit of depth to Ozzy's over-the-top personality. This would also serve to add a bit of a third dimension to this series. But instead, it's resolved instantly. It's a bit disappointing that this show never really left its first gear. Mindless humour. The idea to bring back the old cast works perfectly if you were only intending to reel in fans of the original show for a short time. But if you wanted these fans to stay, or even find a new audience in the younger generation, you need to make the viewer care about the characters who this show is centred around. Make us disappointed about Leah moving back home. Make us feel sorry for Nikki who has been nothing but the best girlfriend to Nate. Make us root for Ozzy to be accepted for who he is. Because if we aren't given a reason to care about these characters, we simply won't care about these characters. 2.5 out of 5 stars. Now let's sit in a circle and discuss an outdated concept. Imagine it's 2023 and you are trying to get into your favourite TV show when... <laughs> what was that? This really does take you out of the episode. I'm going to need a bit of a break. <laughs> okay, but seriously. I understand that this show wants to respect the original, but couldn't it have done away with the laugh track? It is super unnecessary, and even if something funny does happen, it just feels like I am supposed to laugh, which makes me not laugh. Also, humour is very subjective. And sure, there are some funny aspects to this show, but telling me to laugh during them is just not going to happen. What's next? This show forcing its political agenda down my throat? <laughs> if you enjoyed this review of that 90s show, be sure to leave a comment of what movie, TV show, game or news I should cover next. See you next time. this thing like it's my baby till I dropped it down the stairs just like mom did to you Burn! <laughs>